Um, I mentioned at the beginning we're, we're podcasting, webcasting, twittering. So let's take a couple of questions off the Twitter, which, as you know, is coming in at Science So What Twitter feed. So all of those out there, I think, Elliot, you're going to respond at the same time, so they'll get it straight, straight away. So I think first question, John, is to you. Um, and this comes from at the end of the day. Uh, so you'll make of that what you will. The question is, are we prioritising science at the expense of other areas of education and skills training? Is there a danger? You know, you and Paul are powerful figures now. Here are the Prime Minister. Are we going too far the other way? Uh, no, I don't think we are. I think there's some core skills, knowledge that we need in our society. Uh, a critical mass of science engineering, technology, maths-based knowledge that we're going to need as a society in the future. But the idea that you put a narrow ring around that and say um, that's all we need would be wrong. We don't do that. I, mean, I spent yesterday uh, having lunch with uh, a whole group of the country's top climate change scientists. Right? At, at least half of our discussion was about the insights that we need from social sciences into how people respond because you couldn't actually do anything with this scientific knowledge about climate change, which is predicting changing weather patterns, unless we could actually understand how to communicate that with people so that people would respond in rational and constructive ways. So, uh, firstly, we include so so social sciences across the key range of research. And I think in other areas of skills, we make you know, a, a big and appropriate investment. So I, think, I, I like to think we've got the balance right, but we do need to understand that a society like ours needs a critical mass of science-related skills and expertise and knowledge to be successful in all of the other fields we want to be successful in. From Morphosaurus, who <laughs> asks, will Holly be joining the brain drain overseas? Or is there enough here to keep you here? Well, exactly. I think that's a very good point. Um, just talking about my peers at university, it's massively attractive for myself and for everyone else to go and do a PhD in America. They offer free tuition fees, they'll give you a car, they'll give you half rent on a house, things like this. Things that, to be honest, really can't be offered here because we don't have as large a country with as large a population and as large a budget for science. Um, so it is a shame, but at the same time, I do think that we need to keep careers in science in the UK attractive. And I think John made a good point that companies are going around, going around universities and trying to attract students to keep with UK companies. And to be honest, they can probably even offer maybe sabbaticals in their US branches or things like this. So it is a problem, but I think we are addressing it in a way. Question to you, Paul, from at Hardy Duncan, who's out there somewhere. Um, Making PhDs more attractive to do, what made you go after a PhD? I got a well, Holly, I got a company car while I was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it so there, you can in this country, and I'll be in touch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, it was very motivating for me when I was, th was thinking about um, doing my PhD. It was that yeah. I could do that PhD, be sponsored to do it, and... Um, and for me, you know, a car at that time was very important. We have to provide to our young people those things which are important to them to motivate them in a competitive global environment for talent. And that's what we've got to do, is really be quite proactive <coughs> as a country in doing that. So let's talk. Yeah, I, I just want to quickly say, it's funny that I don't know that. This is another thing that I feel, that in the UK we don't advertise these schemes very well. We don't advertise the fact that if you do a PhD with this university, you'll get a company car. Whereas in America, they're very, very good at selling themselves. You have to get the sponsorship. That's, it. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Let's, uh, Elliot, if you don't mind sending a message that uh, I think Paul and John, you've agreed later on to respond to some of these. We are being flooded with questions down here, but we're getting a little bit short of time.